Welcome to the Shivana Library. Today we are playing the third round of the North Star Cup 6 tournament. We've had a strong start and the record is currently clean, 2 and 0 with no game losses. The deck has been performing amazingly well and it can put the pressure on early and survive the late game as well. And what is this deck that we are playing? This is the White Weenie deck right here. As you can see, we are playing Atlantic Old School, so we have a couple of good extra creatures in there. The deck runs a bunch of strong, cheap creatures. The eight knights are usually the best ones to get, but the lions and javelineers can be extremely useful. My creature base is quite stock, but I did want to add the dependent blacksmiths in there if I happen to run in the red decks. If you want a longer deck tech and learn all the interactions, you can check the first part where I go over the whole list in detail. But for now, the short version is that we're going fast and we're going low, trying to build up a formidable army before the opponent can really do anything. And with that, let's get the game started and see if we can keep pushing through all the opponents. And it is game number one. My opponent is on the play, so let's see what we are facing up against a plateau. Well, this, uh, I have a good idea already what I am playing against. Well, you already know what I'm playing against, but that plateau is a good indicator for me. A black vice, nasty turn one play, and a library of Lang. Okay, yeah, this is, uh, this is quite clear for me now. This is probably a uh, tax edge at this point. The red and white colors and with the Library of Lang, those are quite quite obvious dead giveaways. Library of Lang is a card not seen much outside of the uh, tax edge package. And even though they're not the most common side, but a really useful one. And a land tax for me. And this is one of those interesting things about this game. We both are playing with land tax and the balancing act between who has the most lands is going to be crucial here. Both of us want to be playing with low resources so we get to just draw out all the lands we want. But um, I know I can play with just one or two basics in play, so that's not really a problem. My opponent already does have the Sol Ring, which is going to help them a lot, but they do need that double red for the land's edge. So at least one land should be played. Sure, they may have a Mox in there or a Black Lotus. Those would be really useful for either one of us, but let's see how this, how this plays out. A Factory and a Repentant Blacksmith for me, and that Blacksmith is actually going to be really useful here. My opponent is probably going to be using Lightning Bolts as their main creature removal. Swords are always a possibility, but Bolts are always easy, as any deck like that. Lightning Bolt can do that extra 3 damage, which may be enough if you don't get the lands you need. Uh, and as in opposing uh, Swords of Plowshares will be giving the opponent more life. So that Blacksmith might just survive a couple of hits in before before finding out some way to remove it. But as you might have noticed, I did have to play the second land so I could get something in, which meant my opponent is getting their first land tax trigger and three mountains are coming in. This means they may be already playing the land's edge here. They get to three mana immediately. Now, with both of us having land tax in play, the one player who controls the fewer lands is going to be dealing all the damage. So this is going to be quite interesting to see how it's going to be balancing out. And there is the uh, second mountain in play, the second red source, to be more exact. And opponent is thinking about this decision hard. This is not an obvious choice. Yeah, the land's edge is coming in. Because of course they do know that I'm playing white, so disenchants are quite guaranteed card to be in my deck. So that uh, tax and edge are both a prime targets for me. But as you can see, my hand is maybe a little land heavy, so I'm starting to drop those planes away immediately. Also, it makes it so much easier for me for, with the uh, black vice. I'm already down to 15 life, but 
from now on I doubt I have to take any more damage out of that one because uh, if I draw extra lands I can just start throwing them out of my hands and I do not want to play much at this point. A Mesa Pegasus for that extra damage, keeping my hand at four cards so the Black Vice won't be doing anything. And now the big question is, will my opponent be playing any more lands or are we going to be just seeing my two little weenies beat them down? The bad side is I don't have a double white so I can't get my knights out. But this, uh, this is interesting, a Rainbow Veil. That is a clever addition from Fallen Empires in this kind of Atlantic version. And yes, there's the Chain Lightning that could not kill the uh, Repentant Blacksmith. Immediately, of course, hitting the Mesopegasus, but at least that one creature is kind of surviving. But for the uh, Rainbow Veil, that's one way to kind of give your opponents more lands. And in my upkeep, my opponent is tapping the Rainbow Veil to give me the land, but um, he has a little rules thing that he may have missed that, because the Rainbow Veil doesn't actually change ownership immediately. It changes at the end of the turn. So uh, my opponent has to kind of check this out as well. But yeah, that, uh, that Veil is going to be coming in much later and I get to take my three lands here. Yeah, my opponent should have just tapped it on their turn, make sure that it's all mine when my, my turn starts. But this is apparently the first time they've been using the Rainbow Veil, so eh, mistakes happen. And now the great question is, is that going to be enough for me to kind of get away with the game? Or is that, uh, that going to kind of be insignificant here? But the three lands and immediately bend them all. Yeah, I think this, uh, this is a good sign that this game might be over in a heartbeat. Dropping out six points of damage right away. My opponent's at 10, and the thing is that I've been flooding. I've been flooding a lot at this point. My opponent's at nine, and uh, the factory and blacksmith hitting them down to six, and yeah, uh, oh, no, not that one. But uh, one, two, three, four, four planes in hand, that land's edge is going to be in my favor. Game one for the weenies. And it is time for game number two. Let's see if I can push it through as fast as I did last time. My opponent starts with the Savannah Alliance, which is an interesting twist that the attacks edge can do. And I do have my lion of my own. Because uh, they can use that uh, low curve white weenie style as well to kind of push damage if, uh, if the uh, lance edge is not the method that may work the best. Bolt to my lion and their lion is getting through and there is a factory as well, but... Um, yeah, I think all I just have to do now is push in more creatures and the White Knight is a good way to start. It is a great blocker for both of the Factory and the Lions because with the first strike it can just kill the, kill the attacker and not die itself. But uh, unfortunately yeah, there's the Swords to Plowshares and that Knight is long gone. But the more interesting thing here is the Strip Mine. For most decks, Strip Mine is just a way to get you know, rid of a good land like a Library of Alexandria or a Maze of Ith. But Land's Edge decks can use it much more interesting because they can, of course, get out the uh, defending Mistress Factory, but they can also start blowing up their own lands with it, either just by uh, blowing up something just to get the uh, land attacks active and making sure that they can do the damage. And it always comes down to like this kind of a game of chicken in a sense that are you going to be losing your lands? Are they going to be blowing up their own? Who's losing here and at what point? Especially now that they have the land tax in play, I have to be really careful because they can just immediately go and just uh, eat their own factory and they're down two lands, which is really, really difficult for me to kind of build back up from. And they're attacking with the factory and I have a first striking blocker, so it's an obvious they want to get rid of their lands, but after a long thought, I do have to just 
block it at this point because they do have the strip mine so they can get rid of it at any point and they did play the mountain in because of course they need the second red source just to get the lance edge in but uh, with attacks and uh, the strip mine I, I know that they're gonna get it anyway so I just have to start pushing damage here and I know that I don't really have to play any more lands and yeah here's a black lotus as well to make sure that I get my mana so I can quite safely just start dropping in small creatures and kind of building up the board trying to get like more threats in constantly like adding to the board and here is a Mesa Pegasus and the Savannah Lions just for that and I don't even need to tap my lands to do it there's a little rules check with the um, with the opponent but um, we can just keep on playing nothing that relevant to the match but it took long enough so I'm gonna just cut it so you don't have to wait wait here doing nothing but we are back in business and let's see is it lance edge time already yep it is they have both of their tools in play i don't have my land tax so this um this can get difficult but especially now that the strip mine is going to be helping them a lot but i'm at 16 i have five points of damage going in i just have to start pressuring them as much as possible if they want to trade with the lions i'm really happy with that because i just want to get their damage sources out and yeah lions trade i'm happy with the trade and three damage goes in now if i can just find a strip mine or land tax i would be really happy but i think i i have to drop the factory in because i have a disenchant in hand so if they start destroying their own lands, I can disenchant something just so that I can break their tempo, kind of make them play, make them play, play poorly, like making bad decisions. But I don't have to be active. I can just wait a while and see where this goes. And now it is interesting. My opponent is really thinking hard, like what's the line they got to do? Because I'm, I have four points of damage in my creatures as well as the factory so this that is quite a fast clock and there's rainbow veil vale as well that's coming to me uh, is it well if they use it it's coming to me which is gonna make uh, make this quite interesting now of course my opponent remembers to use them on their turn and it's a wheel of fortune yeah, well, obviously I do have to use the disenchant right now, but let's take out the uh, yeah the tax is better target here because my opponent is uh, can easily manipulate the lands on board. So I did have a, unfortunately I did have a second disenchant in hand, which would have been really good to use. But at least now the land's edge is not as bad because they can deal fourteen damage if they're just lucky and pull out seven lands. But I can start dealing damage as well because I don't need any more lands in play. So every land I draw can be just thrown at their face and just two points closer to death. And what did my opponent get? There's a soul ring. Yeah, nice start. And black vice. And another black vice. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good wheel right there. That's a... Six points of damage if I can't do anything, but uh, like I said, the land's edge is still in play. Every land in my hand can be discarded immediately. And I draw two. Two lands from that wheel, that's four damage to them, and that's uh, minus four damage for me. So the vices will be only dealing, dealing two points in total, and the Rainbow Veil now moves to me. Now the interesting thing is, of course, because the land tax is no longer in play, I don't actually have to immediately use the veil if I don't want to, but the question is like, do I want to give it back, give them more mana to play with, or is it just better to hold it? But I don't, because I have the factory and I don't have that much white mana available, I may just have to use it to get something out of my hand. 
but one planes is going to tear face immediately just keeping my hand si card in hand quite low and yeah I'm I am handing out the rainbow veil right back at them and because I got to empty out my hand I can just uh, disenchant the lance edge yeah my opponent throwing out the one planes to my face but I'm still at 12 and then basically I have reset their board completely those two black vices are not going to be doing much here at all my opponent's kind of getting ahead of themselves with the rainbow veil but uh, it's not that big of a deal if they just pull it back to their lands at this point I'm still going to be swinging, but um, yeah, I think I just have to swing with everything, get them as low as I can, and see, can they draw an answer? They don't have many in their deck, but uh, is there something that can get them out of this bind? Because currently, they are dead on board on so many ways. And there is nothing in hand. The weenies take the game 2 and 0 and my hand is just full of gas. And down the tax edge goes. This is probably not the easiest matchup for that deck. As I have some of the same tools in my disposal. As well as the fact that I can get enough early damage in. So the land dropping doesn't really matter as much. In the first game my battle lock turned out to be really helpful. I started flooding early on, which is devastating in any other match, but here that just let me end the game much quicker. My opponent was thinking which was the correct route, go for the early edge to be more mana efficient or drop it in late and basically try to finish me off with one flurry of lands. They thought I was low on resources, which was the likelier option, but they chose poorly. The misplay with the rainbow veil also cost them a lot. If they had just handed it to me straight away and when they played it, the game might have looked a bit different. The second game also was heavily tilted on that wheel. It loaded me up so well, which made it easy to get the damage in. Especially with the land's edge still in play, emptying my hand so the vices wouldn't harm me was easy. As a whole, this is promising. The weenies are doing overtime and getting the job done. I'm really happy how this deck is playing and what the strengths of it are. But now it's time to close the books and wait for the final round. One more game and we can take the whole tournament. Join me again for the final round and we'll see how things turn out. Thank you for visiting the Shivan Library.